Hola, welcome to my channel Clear Vision, where today I'm going to be discussing a concept that's important for anyone on a spiritual journey. So I thought I'd go to a different side of uh, life today. Spiritual bypassing is what I wanted to talk about, and I'm going to explore what it is, why it's harmful, and how to avoid it whilst uh, fostering um, genuine healing. So let's get started. What actually is spiritual bypassing? Well, this involves using spiritual beliefs or practices to avoid dealing with painful feelings, unresolved wounds, or psychological issues. And it often means sidestepping your kind of personal growth and emotional work by focusing solely on spirituality. What are the common behaviors of spiritual bypassing, what does this look like? It can include overemphasizing positive thinking and dismissing ne negative emotions as kind of low vibration or using meditation to escape rather than to process emotions. So it's a way of avoiding the deeper work required for true healing. There are so many examples of this, you know, some people call it toxic positivity and people can, uh, like I just said, people can meditate but not actually focus on what they need to perhaps work on. People can, um, I don't know, there's all sorts of stuff and I don't want to knock any of it because I'm, I'm quite into a lot of it. But it's, if you really want to make changes to yourself, it's not enough to uh, meditate, do yoga, go to a spiritual gathering, um, um, a, a full moon ceremony or various other ceremonies which are out there to, or energy work or working with the quantum or working with the source and stuff like that. It's often not enough. And, and often what I hear, uh, I get this in the room a lot. I, I get people who are quite traumatized and have had traumatizing upbringings or experiences. And so they kind of veer towards, okay, so, uh, you know, this one comes up a lot, and I'm not knocking any of this stuff, because like I said, I do it, I talk to the universe, I go out and talk to the moon, I, I've, I, I, can, I, I like to get involved with spiritual practices, but I do often hear in the room, you know, I've been, for 10 years I've been meditating, doing yoga, doing my breathing exercises, um, I've been going to full moon gatherings, I've been giving gratitude, I've been doing all of this stuff and I'm still not better, I'm still traumatized. And a lot of this is because there's um, like you're, there's a suppression of emotions. So again, this is kind of relegating stuff to the shadow. So I don't want to feel something negative. I don't want to feel this, I don't want to feel that. That's low vibration, that's low energy, that's bad energy, I mustn't do this, I mustn't do that. I mustn't feel this way, I'm gonna transcend my trauma, rather than actually, and I'm not a big fan as a therapist, of going round and round in someone's trauma either. I don't think that's a way of uh, particularly moving forward. You want to move forward and you want to kind of like dip into the then and there and look at the here and now and see how the two correlate and one affects the other and how you can grow as a person, spiritually, emotionally, psychologically, physically, but often what people do is they think, you know, that these spiritual practices are enough on their own. Sometimes they are. Sometimes they really are. But, you know, if you've, if you've been, uh, I don't know, well, maybe I should get heavy. If you've been, I don't know, raped or abused or have suffered some kind of violence or neglect or emotional coercion or whatever, you know, seriously, sitting around Tibetan bowls which are being rung and um, chanting, chances are it's not going to work. It might relax you in that moment. It might help calm your system in that moment. The same as a breathing exercise. It might help calm you down. But often for people, it does not address the trauma. You're avoiding the trauma. You're going around it. This is what the spiritual bypassing is about. And often people don't mean to do it. It's painful to go there. It's, it's really, really difficult. So it, And it's like... Some of these spiritual practices offer this kind of like, oh, well, I can do this and this and this. And people are under the kind of uh, misunderstanding that that's, this is going to be enough. And often it's not. So it's like an emotional suppression. Like I said, it's like avoiding the fact that it's there. So I'm going to work all the way around it. So you avoid these negative emotions, which can lead to unresolved issues festering beneath the surface, which potentially causes greater harm over time. From an existential perspective, this avoidance prevents individuals from confronting the realities of their existence and 
I think the existentialists and as well the unions would say it, it denies you the full range of human existence and human experience. You know, you cannot, and, and anybody who's into the, you know, the Eastern kind of philosophies and the spiritual stuff, it's the yin-yang. You know, you need, you, need the, you need the sadness to experience the joy. You need the, you need the dark to experience the light and stuff like that. Otherwise, if you're just always focused on the light, you're always avoiding the dark. You're always avoiding the dark. And the two kind of come hand in hand. It's the yin-yang stuff going on. And sometimes people get this out of balance. So uh, another one is inauthenticity. It's another issue. Spiritual bypassing creates this uh, facade of enlightenment or peace, preventing genuine self-awareness and growth. And it can strain relationships by invalidating others. So it's like, you know, I have access to this divine wisdom and you don't, and your energy is low and your vibration is low and this is wrong and that's wrong. Um, and it can, it can get quite ego-based. And if you find yourself either doing it or around someone who's doing it, you know, take stock, take a step back. Hang on, what's going on here for me? Do I really have access to some divine revelation and wisdom? And am I truly evolved? One thing I've learned over my years and my personal experience is anybody who comes up to me and says that they are fully evolved, fully aware, reached the end of the individuation process, have gained enlightenment and nirvana, chances are they haven't. Because first of all, if they had, they wouldn't feel the need to tell you. So like I said, this can actually make or break some relationships because it can be quite invalidating of the other person, especially their experiences or their emotions uh, in favor of some kind of like spiritually correct viewpoint. How do you recognize spiritual bypassing? Well, kind of look for the signs as I've said, but if it's in yourself, ask reflective questions of yourself. Like, am I avoiding certain emotions? Am I using spirituality to escape reality? Am I using it as a defense mechanism effectively? Recognize, you know, because we can do that with altruism and things like that. You're I'm gonna start doing lots of good things for everybody else and actually avoid my own pain. You can uh, recognize it in others, um, which involves noticing patterns of consistently avoiding difficult conversations or invalidating other people's emotional experiences. Okay, so what's that, that's, that's on the spiritual bypass side. What, what would be a healthy integration of spirituality and healing? So a balanced approach, which I would say is, is essential, would be to integrate spiritual practices with emotional and psychological work. Embrace all of your emotions. Don't leave anything hidden in the shadows. Understanding that all of your emotions have value and they can be gateways to deeper healing. This, uh, this aligns with um, you know, many kind of therapeutic uh, approaches, you know, uh, and I'll go with the psychological ones because obviously that's kind of my base, if you like. It, it, it's accepting and validating all aspects of the human experience. And, uh, you know, maybe you can seek some professional help if you have had something really traumatic happen to you or maybe less traumatic. And it's a block. It's an impasse. You can't get past it. And the spiritual, the more kind of off the wall spirit, off the wall, that's not correct either. The more kind of spiritual practices, if you like, um, are not helping. Um, you know, there's no shame in going to therapy. There's no shame in going to um, seek some kind of help to help get you unstuck, to help see maybe where your blind spots are and what you might be avoiding, and maybe under, address some underlying issues uh, holistically, you know? This is, a, this is about holism, you know, holistically approaching yourself, not just from the spiritual side. Grounding techniques are also really good, mindfulness, uh, breath work, journaling, they all help connect with spirituality and physical, emotional um, realities. So, I think I'd like to add in here that spiritual journeys uh, are very, very personal to the individual. And if you, if you go back through history and look at some of the spiritual journeys people have had, um, they have really, really have been to hell and back um, within themselves and their own personal story, if you like, their own journey through life. And they often don't really talk about it. They don't boast about it. They don't wander around telling everybody they're so spiritual. They don't wander around telling other people they're not doing the work or telling other people that they have a low vibration or that they have low energy or, or this or that. You know, often these people who've had truly spirit, who've had true spiritual growth, I mean, effectively they're egoless. That's, that's the point. They become egoless. If you're egoless, there's no more I. There's no more, it's just 
It's just being. You don't feel the need to, you're wrong, you're wrong, I'm wrong, they're wrong, I'm doing it right. You know, there's no need for any of that. It is this kind of egoless state where you are just at one with yourself and the world around you. That's that's where you're heading towards. And there a lot of acceptance, you know, it's, it's where, you know, acceptance and non-attachment and uh, transcending traumas uh, and transcending things that have happened to you. This is what it's about. And it's very, very personal and very subjective. So uh, I really hope that helps. Uh, and it's another, just a short video. It gives you a brief overview again of kind of spiritual bypassing. I'm going to talk more about spirituality and stuff um, in future videos. So hopefully you'll stay tuned to watch those. And until I see you next time, please take really good care of yourselves. Adios.